y'all it's Jen I hope this video finds you guys well it is about I think August 4th today and I'm going to show you today how I made my little scrapbook uh, string tied little journal thingamabob <laughs> okay I was influenced by these really cool creators, uh, two of them, and I kind of mix their their styles together. And the first one, her name is Charmaine Coquilla, and I'm going to put in a picture of her class right her now. Her class is available on Skillshare, and uh, not sponsored or anything, but I just loved the freedom of her, the journal that she created. It was kind of like a tag book. Uh, but it was more of like a travel journal and it was just held together by one string and the other class that I was highly highly inspired by her name is Nuria Mel and I will insert a picture of her class here but her class was regarding your creative process or your illustrating process how she merged the culture of scrapbooking with art making and I know I'm not like a professional artist and I won't be going to meetings and showing them a portfolio, but in lieu of a portfolio, she uses this really awesome scrapbook where she puts all of her little collage cutouts and drawings and things in a scrapbook and it becomes like a narrative in and of itself almost. So I thought something cool to motivate myself towards a goal I have for this month, which is to create more collaged pieces for my Patreon art collage pages. Um, that's my goal to do that more this month. And to make it special, I decided to make it into a special scrapbook where every time I'm done with a piece, I will use washi tape to adhere it into the little scrapbook that I have. And this one is not made with any fancy supplies or expensive supplies. It's literally made out of um, cereal boxes. So let me go back a little bit and let you know that if you're new, I um, love uh, journaling and mixed media and especially collage. And I've been experimenting with different journaling techniques. So you can find a bunch of different journals, styles in previous videos. Um, so this time I kind of merged both of those ideas. So I'm using the loose leaf technique, but I'm going to use um, two holes instead of the one hole uh, just to make it more secure and safe so it stays closed uh, to protect my pieces. And it kind of is like a binder journal, which I'm going to have a flip through of that soon. And I just loved the binder journal. That is hands down my favorite journal. And it's so easy to work in, so much freedom. Oh my gosh, it, it makes you feel so motivated and so proud once you're filling it up. And you can just take out the empty pages that you didn't work on, you know. And you can take out pages and work on them and then put them back. If you get new things, punch holes in it you know, like happy mail, punch holes in it, put it back. So this is kind of the same idea, but it's much prettier than like using binder rings. Um, the binder rings that I have are just basic. I don't have any of the pretty ones. Um, you know, like the bronze, you know, or the vintagey ones or even colored ones. So I thought this was an inexpensive way to make an awesome little scrapbook and I'm actually currently working on making my August journal just like this okay and that's going to be my everyday kind of memory keeping journal so what I did was I made the cover two layers of cereal boxes and I just kind of sized it out to the size that I wanted and I used the uh, you know the first collaged piece as like you know a guide you know to determine the measurement for my journal so my little uh, astronomer scientist lady she you know was such and such wide and such and such tall so i made it you know that big and so right now i'm just cutting it to size and uh yeah like i said two layers of cover is pretty decent um if you want it to be like a thick board like a book board probably use uh maybe four pieces but I, I'm really happy with the two that I have now. 
and uh, so yeah I just use Fabri-Tac because that glue is um, fast to dry and to grab hold of your items and it doesn't wrinkle or ripple your paper if you guys have a different suggestion for glue I would love to know what kind you use so let me know what else doesn't ripple paper and it is good just like this so let me know so I'm putting two of those together and I don't have to wait overnight for anything to dry like you would if you were making, you know, a real book with PVA glue, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm happy with it. And yeah, I just rolled over it. So to make sure that all the glue sticks, cause it is a glossy surface. Um, I used to sand the, the glossy surfaces together, but it really does, it's not necessary. This glue really does you know, hold uh, well together. So if you want to be extra careful, I would suggest you sand it a little bit just so that uh, you have some texture for the glue to grab onto. Uh, but if you're in a hurry, you know, just like me, just go for it, go all in. I need to get a new bottle, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so, oh gosh, I was so motivated. So Mel, okay, I forgot to say, Nuria Mel creating an illustrated scrapbook. That class is available on Domestica. So Domestica, I'm loving, loving that service. And again, I'm not sponsored or anything. A lot of the classes, I think it's, I don't know if it's a Spanish, mainly Spanish, um, you know, uh, classes, but there's also English speaking people there, you know, people from all over Europe. And, and so I'm not really sure, like if it's just international, I don't know where they're based out of. But you can put on subtitles and you can slow down the, um, the videos if you want to follow along. And they're usually about $10, 10 to $12. And a really dense class is probably up to $25. They always have these sales going on. I think that's a marketing thing, but you'll see like a, 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 a clock ticking down at the top every time you get on there. But the quality of the videos are amazing. It's kind of like a creative bug, but I think much better because these artists are like, wow, they're like really, really highly professional and have done all kinds of editorials and stuff. But there's so many cute classes, craft classes and things. Let me just um, interrupt here. I used recycled shipping paper uh, to cover this and uh, yeah, so I all of this is recycled stuff. Well almost all of it So yeah, I crinkled this up and then I wrapped it like you were you know, you're gonna cover a book So I I crinkle it and then I just I don't know I think I glued it a little bit to this front cover and then I just wrap it around like a normal book yeah, so anyway, um, the classes are great and you know there's so many about illustrating and having a sketchbook i mean it's for you know basic skill levels to highly skilled and like if you want to make a career and go into like surface design and stuff i mean they have all kinds of classes the quality is much better than skillshare i would say um but again you do have to pay for each class so but anyway her her idea and her process uh, this Nuria lady, her process for, you know, um, making her art collection and documenting it into a scrapbook. I just thought it was so cool. It just adds um, a sense of like, it's special and you're protecting your work and and it's mo it motivates me to work in the book. And so I've made a lot of collage pieces already. I've made a moth. I've made a moon man, I've made flowers, I've made mushrooms, and my astronomer scientist lady. So yeah, it motivates me. So anyway, and this is using the double-sided tape from Dollar Tree, and let me tell you, that stuff is pretty good. If you haven't risked um, getting it yet, I recommend it. It's got a strong hold on it, and it's awesome. So yeah, this is easy. This is the first time I've used this tape um, technique to fold over my uh, cover pages. I love it. it. There's no mess. I used to use Fabri-Tac and it just, it seeps out and it just gets all over your fingers and your project gets like grubby. So yeah, it's just a matter of finding like the perfect tools for the different stages of your project. You, you know, you don't necessarily have to use a glue stick for everything. You know, it's just, you, it takes different tools and 
it takes experience so you guys let me know if you've ever tried um, this or what are your go-to techniques and your secrets what, what do you do so yeah I love this I love this um, again I'm using Fabri-Tac um, just a little bit to uh, you know secure this this paper over this um, you might have concerns over the um, acid or something in these products I the reason why I was fine using this cover is because most of my art pieces are going to be I'm going to try to scan them in into my computer and in addition to that in the inside of the book I did put acid free paper you know I put some white cardstock I'm not sure if it's acid free but I think basically all the papers are acid free basically right I mean I don't know um, but yeah, definitely got some colored cardstock that's acid free because it's made for um, scrapbookers. So yeah, I just put some thick pages. I also did put some recycled craft paper in there. I'm not sure about the acid in that one, but I usually don't care about that. I do think that recycled materials like this do last a long time. I, I mean, people still still find old scrapbooks and old papers have survived for a really long time. So, and I figured with that recycled scrap pages, I could just use those for sketching or drawing or taking notes um, about my project. So you'll see the pages um, in a minute. So I hope you guys are doing well and I hope I'm not being too blabby here, but yeah, it's just been a busy month. I basically dropped off the last week and a half to finish Patreon goodies. I'm very, very proud of the uh, Happy Mail that I sent out this month. And I'm just so excited. I included a zine and it's full color and I just love it. I think it's so cute. And it shows some little drawings from my personal sketchbook that I don't show people. And just, you know, little thoughts here and there about uh, creativity and creating. So I think that's the thing I want to do every month is just to do a little zine that shows, you know, the behind the scenes, the secrets of creating. Um, it's You'll see that it's not that hard, you know, to create. You just kind of got to organize, you know, your thoughts a little bit. And uh, nobody has like uh, automatic artistic thoughts or automatic ideas for creating or doing a journal spread basically what you have to do is just start you know just start so if you're uh journaling start by ripping a little piece of paper and start gluing it on the page trim out your photograph you know just glue one or two things or start by painting the background you know with uh pastels or little um tempera paint markers or gelatos or something and once you start your mind will shut off and you'll get in something called the flow state and that's when you really your analytical mind is turned off and the creativity will start to flow you just have to start I've been learning through all these classes from all these professionals that something that you really have to do is you have to look for inspiration. It doesn't just come from your head, you know, it can, you know, but the key is looking for inspiration and beginning and starting and you're not you're not going to like everything that you do at first, but you have to get to that over that hump. You got to get into that flow state go to the other side and you can't get there unless you actually sit down and do it and so for example last night i was i started drawing in my sketchbook i was taking the advice and i said okay i'm gonna start just drawing some stuff and i know that i'm not gonna like it at first and i know that it's not gonna be important but it's gonna lead me to that flow state and so i started off by drawing like you know a liter of soda you know a soda bottle of my favorite soda and i just made some really wonky ugly people you know i'm just i'm really not good at drawing on the spot i i'm much co more comfortable on the tablet 
um, <clears throat> because you can always just like back up, back up, edit, start over. You know, you can do a light sketch, trace over it. It's really flexible. I would recommend um, a used iPad to everybody because I think it's an ultimate equalizer. If you didn't go to art school, and you are an artistic person, you can get so far and start building an income if you have an iPad. And I know they're very expensive. I've also seen people use Procreate on their cell phones, their smartphones, believe it or not. I think that'd be very hard. But um, yeah, so me drawing automatically, it's a no-go. But as I'm drawing, I'm practicing you know, I, when I get in that flow state, more creative things are coming out. And I started to draw like a, a profile of a moon. And I wanted to have the moon like kind of doing an air split in the air. And I had the legs all wonky. And I said, I, this doesn't look right to me. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to draw a third leg. I'm just going to ignore the wrong one for now. And I'm just going to add the third leg. Okay. So I did that and yeah, it looks really weird, <laughs> but I covered up the wrong leg or I covered up one at a time to see which position looks the best, you know, for the side profile of the moon. And I came up with a new posture, you know, one that I hadn't thought of. So yeah, it's just a process and you know, you don't have to show your sketchbook to anybody. Mine looks really crazy, really weird. It looks like I'm on drugs. You know, um, but I came up with a couple cute ideas that I will then incorporate later on in my real stuff that I make, you know, on Procreate. So I used the crocodile here. Um, I decided where my holes are going to be and I put in some brads. So hopefully you guys, um, or no, what are these? Not brads. Uh, oh gosh, the word escapes me right now. Grommets, little grommets. Um, yeah, so I got these at, I think I got these at Michael's in the, actually in the sewing section, I think. These are hard for me to find. I don't know why. I would love to have the colored ones, so you guys let me know where they are. So yeah, I put these. This is just to protect the cover uh, so that the string doesn't, you know, rip away at the paper or, you know, for some reason, like, cut through, you know, the, the cardboard cover. So yeah, I here I've developed my covers and I cut all of my paper to size and I kind of mixed them up, you know, uh, just alternated the colors. And I don't think I'm going to make anything. I'm not going to uh, glue down anything on my front cover. Okay, here I trace the whole placement over the first page. Okay, just to make sure everything lines up. And then I use that page to then punch holes in the following pages. And I made, and the pages are a little, um, diff, you know, varying in sizes. So I made sure to center ev all of the pages. So you'll see that in a second. See how I centered that white sheet? Just because I want everything centered. I don't want, you know, anything staggered. Yeah, so I use a crocodile for the first, for the covers because that's like the perfect size for a brad fitting. And, it, and the crocodile can cut through th uh, pretty thick uh, material. I've cut through really thick uh, book board with these. And it's also cut through fabric too, if you've done a fabric covered book, you know. Um, but then I use a hole punch for the remaining pages because then I put hole reinforcers, uh, those stickers around each of the holes. Cause I know that I'm gonna have string and not really a binder, but a string. And I just don't want the string kind of uh, adding like friction and ripping, you know, the pages apart. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I'm so excited by this idea that I am starting a journal. I'm making a journal just like this. Um, and I can't wait. I, I think it's going to be a little more difficult to work flexibly like a binder journal, but at least I know that if I want to, I can um, untie the strings. If you keep them in like a loose knot, sort of, um, <clears throat> you can untie the strings and take out pages. I know it's going to be a little more tedious than the binder journal, but I think it's a really pretty alternative to it. It looks really kind of, you know, primitive and 
scrappy i kind of like it it's like really homemade looking and it looks kind of like childlike too which i really love but anyway i i hope you guys are okay with the chattiness um yeah just been busy and got all my patreon images done and those are posted i did a little um nostalgic back to school stuff but i like changed it around so that journalers could use the art so that's up on my Patreon now, and I have examples of them on my Instagram, so you can see them. And all of my info and links to the inspiration behind this book is going to be linked. And my kids are starting school next week, and I just know things are going to be crazy. Uh, going into the weekend, got to get school clothes and that kind of thing. Luckily, we already have our school supplies. So this string is actually also from Dollar Tree. It's the, uh, I don't know if what it's called. What is it called? Burlap twine or uh, jute twine or something like that. Um, <clears throat> if you get that the stuff that's in the hardware section, it's I think it's much cheaper than the craft section. Because you get three spools instead of one. So definitely think about that. I doubled doubled it so I had to make sure not to pull all the way through so you can see here I kind of secure it a little bit because I wanted it uh, double strength I think that's what um, the lady did in the loose leaf travel travel notebook so I'm just matching up my holes but yeah this this part right here is just as tedious if you're working with a binder ring because you have to match up you know all the holes and everything so, yeah, but, oh, and I also, there's, I also have freebies on my Patreon page. I'm not sure. I think a lot of you are not on Instagram. Um, I do have some freebies for you guys if you want to take a look on my Patreon. And I got a lot of uh, nice feedback for it. So they're there for you as a thank you because I... You know, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos and making such nice comments. So that helps me out so much. So I, you know, I have a thank you gift for you available at my Patreon. So check it out. So here I am trying to fit, um, I don't know what you would call it, slack or something, so that I am able to turn the pages um, nicely. And uh, yeah, I don't want the pages to rub up against each other. So you can see I'm, um, I did a little loopy thing. You know what you do at the top of like a journal tag with a ribbon or string. At first I did that and then I tied around that and made a knot there just so it doesn't come undone. And I don't know if that makes sense, but if you just play with it, you'll find something that you're comfortable with, like a way to like have the, it, the knot done okay so you can open the pages freely and everything yeah so i'm just going to do that for the other side yeah yeah i covered uh both of the book covers with a uh, cardstock and i got that from tuesday morning so that was a good deal too i'm sure you guys have tons of scrap of paper I would love, you know, and actually invite you guys to follow along with me on this uh, project as I make these different collage pieces. Um, ultimately, I'm hoping to make some repeated patterns out of them if I can get, you know, decent enough scans and be able to, you know, extract them from the backgrounds and everything. So I'm hoping to have some pattern paper and some pretty journaling cards for next month's uh, Patreon. And I chose, and also the other challenge is doing a limited color palette because I'm always doing highly saturated colors in every color, you know, of the rainbow. And I really do love that, but I just want to try something different just to see what happens. Um, if it looks a little more artistic or more advanced, I don't know. But I chose a, a color palette that I think will be able to be used for Halloween time. And I um, was really inspired by like the first, uh, first known sci-fi film 
which was uh, in English, uh, it's called A Trip to the Moon. And I don't know if you guys know, like, uh, in the 90s, Smashing Pumpkins, they used to be my favorite band in high school. I was obsessed. I had, like, three binders full of their photographs, and I would take them to school every day. It's like how people are obsessed with K-pop, and I had no idea, but they still do little albums. <laughs> and they put all of their the singers' pictures in the little albums, and they look like little, um, they put them in binder, like, tiny binders, like the clear ones, which is so cute, but... Anyway, um, they had a video tonight, tonight, and that they just totally lifted the the movie, um, a trip to the moon. They just totally took all of it. But um, if you read on Wikipedia the history behind it, it's really awesome. I love what the filmmaker stood for. He was like an anti-imperialist, and he kind of mocked the pretentious like scientific community at the time. Like I love like I'm. I like science, you know, like I believe in scientists and stuff like that. But um, I do believe like um, in the, I, you know, I don't believe in the pretentiousness of like, you know, you know, philosophers and, and stuff like where they can't really talk like a regular human, you know, like put it in layman's terms, you know, that's like highly academic. <laughs> but anyway, I, anyway, that's besides the point. But he used a lot of, um, like they painted a lot of props and they did a lot of like mechanical stuff to make things move. It was very primitive and childlike, which I love. Like if a kid were to put on a play at their house, what, what kind of special effects would they do, you know? And it was in black and white and it was, um, a silent film. And so, um, it, it, I guess they would sell the movie to different places. I think like some kind of circus guy bought it or somebody that had like a amusement park or something, he purchased it and then they would have like live music with the film. So I just thought that was cool. But the theme is like these scientists going to the moon and I just love how the moon looks. I love how cute it is. I love all the props. And so that's my inspiration you know what I'm kind of working towards so there's going to be like lots of stars and moon imagery and I made like an astronomer girl and she's a she's an anti-imperialist she's like the good one you know so <laughs> but this is her right here and I um put together like a mood board of different things that inspire me and um uh, Jim Henson Muppets like inspire me too like from Fraggle Rock I, I really love the I think they're called dozers or something they're little <clears throat> like uh, spherical nose <laughs> and how they're mint green so just combined all my inspirations you know into a mood board and I just reference you know the mood board you know to get to start with an idea so this is the finished book. I have a reel on my Instagram of me creating the title page in, in real time. And yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% on how this turned out, but you know, it's cute enough. And next time I'll, you know, do a lot better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm interested to hear your feedback on whether or not you'll try this kind of journal. It's really inexpensive and it doesn't take that long and you can use all recycled materials if you want and it just has that flexibility you know if you're in a tight spot if you want to add in something or take out some pages but I hope you guys are doing well definitely remember to check out my freebies that are available on patreon and they're really adorable collage girls and they have little speech bubbles where you can write in you know some journaling and um, yeah so you guys let me know and join me on this trip to the moon. I love you guys and remember that you are creative. You just have to start. Bye until next time.